Between the IB Diploma, a year of biomedical sciences, and now medical school, I've spent thousands of hours studying over the last few years, and I feel compelled to show you the seven main study techniques that I use on a daily basis. None of the Pomodoro, sleep well, healthy habits type stuff is gonna be on here. It's all evidence-based, it's all practical, it's all backed up by my own personal experience. Because of these techniques, I've learned to consume content at such a high rate with such effectiveness that I now maybe only need to study 15 to 20 hours a week other than classes and I still do well in medical school, I post decent videos on YouTube and I have a pretty fun social life. Learning isn't some complex pathway in your mind, it's just two steps. One, understanding the content, also known as encoding, and two, remembering it so that you can apply it, also known as retrieval. That's it, regardless of the subject understanding and remembering. Everything I talk about today will either address one or both of those. The issue is, I don't think anyone thinks about the understanding step of the process. All of us jump straight to the memorizing step, making questions, making flashcards, using mnemonics, all this cool sort of stuff. But what I found was that by placing equal importance onto the encoding, understanding part of the process, you will not only encode the information more efficiently, you will store it better, and hence you'll just need to revise and do the whole active recall a lot less. A lot of people think that when we consume information, we just store it neatly into folders in our head and that's how we understand it. But that's not true. Think of when you learn yourself. When you read a new fact, what does your brain do? You think of all the other things that relate to that fact and then you link it in with that prior knowledge. So practically, what does this mean? When I read something for the first time, I'm thinking about how this information relates to my previous knowledge. What type of mental models do I actually have from before that can help me contextualize this piece of information? And then the second thing I do is that I relate it to the bigger picture. That's how you encode and understand something efficiently. You don't just read it and go like, yeah, I get it. For example, when I was taught about heart failure last week, I thought of my prior knowledge of how a heart pumps. Oh, so the issue is an obstruction. Okay, what's causing the obstruction? Is it this valve? Yeah, this is the valve. And that valve is leading to backflow of the blood through the pulmonary vessels into the lungs. Oh, that causes fluid in the lungs to build up, which is causing the edema. Oh, that's why he's breathless. That's why he's coughing. It's not the best example, but you know what I mean. And to be honest, instead of thinking, oh, I'm gonna sit and understand this one paragraph. No, what you should be doing is that you should be jumping straight to the higher forms of learning, straight into encoding that knowledge as efficiently as possible using analogy stories asking yourself questions and linking that information into your previous knowledge and by focusing on these higher forms of encoding your brain will naturally understand the information and then organize it in a way that will help you remember it for a much longer period of time whenever I have trouble understanding the information what helps is working backwards starting with a big concept starting with the last chapter throwing myself in the deep end and then working backwards that's actually the basis of how they teach us at medical school here as well well. We're given a new case every week with new conditions, new drugs, all these new symptoms that we've never heard of. We go through it as a PBL group and then we work backwards. What are the patient's symptoms? Oh, they're giving him beta blockers. What are they giving him for? Hypertension. Oh, okay, what does a beta blocker do then? What is his mode of action? I understand. And then you work backwards. You figure out what the molecular processes are. And I feel like that way of thinking just helps you form a much better picture than it would if you just read a line that said that beta blockers are a group of beta Data, adrenogenic blocking agents that um, act on these neuroreceptors that are a class of drugs that blah blah blah. Reading something like that would make it impossible for you to relate that information back to your previous knowledge. Similarly with a math or physics problem, it is when you don't understand something, it's much easier to look at the solution and work backwards step by step, understand how your friend or the past paper has solved that same question that you're having trouble with. People love the Pomodoro technique, but I personally think it's so overhyped. Yes, in theory, it gives you good work time, it gives you good rest time, and it can motivate you to get out of a rut. But for me, I don't see any situation where 25 minutes of work and five minutes of rest would ever get me out of a rut and make me want to work. Most tasks take longer to work on than 25 minutes anyways. And I think the whole fixed work and rest time, it just slows me down so much more. I used to use the Pomodoro timer all the time with when I was studying with people in the library. And what would always end up happening was either we just stare at the timer until we get that break or that timer would interrupt our flow state, our process our work and we would have to pull our concentration away from that to get that five minute break. The 15 minute work and 10 minute rest is something that would work a bit better, but I just never use it on a daily basis. The way that I work instead is through the flow time technique. Full disclosure, I'd never even known this was a thing. I just always used it, I, but apparently it's a very well researched technique and it's very effective. So what ends up happening here is that you pick a task, you focus on it for as long as possible, and then you break after you finish that task 
or you break when your concentration levels dip below 50%. I love this because it's so basic and it encourages deep work. I don't have a stupid timer when I'm working, I can keep continuously going, I can stay in flow state and get so much more done. When I'm doing medicine work like reading or doing questions, I can go at least an hour or two before I having to take a, like a 15 minute walk or going to get something to eat. But then with YouTube videos, I can spend five to six hours straight editing because it's so relaxed and you could just get into it. That's why I prefer the flow time technique over the Pomodoro method because I can work as much as I want. I can be flexible with how much I work depending on the day, depending on the task, depending on the subject. And then I can break as soon as my concentration levels, as soon as I feel my focus drop below 50%, which by the way, also changes throughout the day itself. Doing a task, doing it until I can tr try and finish it and then taking that break, that is a lot better for me personally than doing the Pomodoro technique. Now back to the learning process. Once you fulfill the first step, the understanding, encoding the information into your head efficiently, now it's time for the second step, the remembering and the retrieval of the knowledge that you understood in the first place. And I do this by practicing questions. Every single exam that I've done well in without having to work like crazy, I've made practicing questions an integral part of my revision, an integral part of my everyday study session. In medical school, I make my own questions. I go through the slides and the books that I need to learn from and convert that information into my own recall questions. I don't write the answers beside them. I just focus on making the questions and understanding the information through the encoding method that I talked about previously. And then when I come back to revise this topic, I start by answering each one of the questions that I made and try and answer them without using any resources, try and retrieve and test myself on the knowledge that I learned back then. After testing myself to the best of my ability and focusing on the retrieval, the remembering part of the process, this is when I go back to the slides and the PowerPoints to figure out what I got wrong, what I got right. And if I didn't get something right, it's okay. I just focus on understanding it a bit better this time and focus on linking it in with that bigger picture. For people in school though, I can't lie, if you're doing GCSEs, A-levels, IB, you should not be wasting time making your own questions. You have past papers, you have marked schemes. You literally just need to be practicing those types of questions. So to test yourself, just stick with practicing those questions. Make it an integral part of your study session. Put it in your schedule. In biology back then, I made this spreadsheet with one column filled with past paper questions and another column filled with their corresponding mark scheme answers. And whenever I'd revise, I'd start by hiding the mark scheme answers and practicing those questions because those are the questions that I'm going to be examined on. You must have done this before at some point. So you know that when you explain something to someone, one. If you know it properly, you'll be able to explain it without any hindrance, without any interruptions in yourself. You'll be able to think clearly and make them understand what you understand. Whereas if you don't understand something, if that knowledge isn't clear in your head, you won't be able to explain it to them. You won't be able to answer their questions. All in all, teaching is such an effective way of retrieval and it helps you test yourself in such a low effort, easy way. What I do quite often is that I just sit and explain the concept to myself out loud in my room. I do this weird thing where I look at the clock and give myself this challenge challenge of summarizing and monologuing everything I've learned for the past whatever many hours I've been studying in under a minute. I give myself a minute to do to summarize all of it and if I can't then I failed. It's just something I always did to like reboot my concentration but it's very effective because I'm active recalling and I'm literally figuring out what I know and what I don't know in that minute's time. Before I start anything new I always spend five to seven minutes quickly skimming the entire lecture, going through the slides, looking at all the titles, the bullet points and seeing how it's all laid out. I do the same with textbooks as well. Instead of starting from line one and then reading downwards I look at the page, give it a two minute scan, look at the keywords and the subheadings and figure out that bigger picture. It's pre-studying and it's giving yourself a general understanding of what you're about to learn. It's giving yourself a framework for the knowledge that you have to now consume. And when I'm learning it later, I'm able to organize the information a lot better, which helps with encoding and understanding the information as well. By briefly going through what I'm about to learn before I dive in, I'm giving myself the chance to understand what's important, what's not important, and what stuff to give more time to when I'm actually reading that page or going through the slides. But the key here is to avoid getting sucked into the details, because this isn't the time for that. It's the time for you to construct a bigger picture of the chapter that you're about to learn so that when you're going through the details you'll be able to link them and relate them to the bigger picture a lot better. I think this is one of my biggest strengths when I'm working. As soon as I feel like a technique or a book isn't working for me I have a very good judgment of this and I can switch it up extremely quickly. I kind of just don't like being inefficient and I hate wasting time that's just who I am so when I feel like I'm not understanding something when I'm just wasting time reading something without getting it in my head I immediately switch to a YouTube video or to my pre-made notes or something else that will get, help me understand it a lot faster. I think Einstein said this as well, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is literally insanity. So whenever something isn't working, whenever you're stuck, ask yourself, what's not working right now? Is there another source that I could use? Can I ask a friend or 
do something else that will change my method, that will help me improve the way I'm working right now. Even today, to be honest, when I was looking at a bunch of uh, drugs and how they work, their modes of actions, after reading those few paragraphs, my mind was going blank. Nothing was actually going in. So instead of continuously trying to read, I straight away jumped to flowcharts and diagrams and learned from them instead. Visualizing the processes helped way more. And thank God I have this judgment of knowing when to change it up, when to switch my method up because it saves so much time on a daily basis. I didn't talk about one thing yet in this video and that is spaced repetition. As much as spaced repetition is backed up by science, everyone says that implementing it is too hard. So I've designed a practical framework that you can use for your spaced repetition in this video right here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped and I'll see you in the next one.